Hollywood, California, Monday, August 17th. The Lux Radio Theater presents John Bowles in The Vagabond King with Evelyn Venable. Lux presents Hollywood. Our stars, John Bowles and Evelyn Venable. Our producer, Cecil B. DeMille. Our guests, Robert Riskin and Geneva Sawyer. And our director of music, Louis Silvers. Welcome also to the distinguished personalities in our audience. Craig Reynolds, Adrian Ames, Mrs. John Bowles, and Helen McFadden of the McFadden Publications. To our listeners, seen and unseen, greetings from Lux. It is fitting that this program should come to you from this city of stars, because nowhere in the world are Lux Flakes better known or more extensively used than in the leading motion picture studios here in Hollywood. For washing woolens, prints, silks, in fact, for all fabrics that are washable, the studios know how newness is prolonged, how colors are protected by washing with those light, sheer, but marvelously effective Lux Flakes. The flakes that have made cake soap rubbing a thing of the past. And now, may I again present as our producer, the man who has given us dozens of our best-known performers and 62 of our great motion pictures. He comes direct to the Lux Radio Theater from one of the big stages at Paramount, where he is now filming The Plainsman. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's play had its beginning more than a hundred years before Shakespeare was born. In those days, a tragic harlequin roamed the streets of Paris, drinking in its cellars and sleeping in its garrets. He had the conscience of a pickpocket and the soul of a poet. His name was Francois Villon. Almost five centuries later, Justin Huntley McCarthy wrote Villon's story in a play called If I Were King. E.H. Southern starred in it. And in that first company, I had the honor to be one of Francois Villon's vagabonds, the worst cutthroat in the play, Colin de Cailleur. It was excellent training for my later career, my actors tell me. With us in the cast were two lovely ladies, Constance Adams and Margaret Ellington. Yesterday, Miss Adams and I celebrated our 34th wedding anniversary. And Margaret Ellington, then the wife of Daniel Froman, later married Major Bowles. A few years ago, the play reappeared on Broadway with Rudolph Frimmel's music and a new title, The Vagabond King. And starring in it tonight is John Bowles, who starred in the first production of the Lux Radio Theater almost two years ago. Fate tried to keep John off the stage. At the University of Texas, he was a star pitcher, not not a pitcher star. He once struck out 26 batters in a doubleheader, which brought him three offers from the major leagues. He preferred to study medicine. But when the war broke out, John enlisted. He spent 22 months overseas and was wounded twice. Returning to the United States, he taught French in Glens Falls, New York. But the next season found him on the New York stage. As the star of The Vagabond King, he is the only player who has starred in the Lux Radio Theater four times. Featured with him is Laughing Eyes so-called by the Iroquois tribe that adopted her, but better known as Evelyn Venable. Miss Venable won a place in Walter Hampton's repertoire company with a performance of Juliet. The balcony for that performance was the hayloft in the barn at Walter Hampton's Connecticut farm. Her audience was Mr. Hampton and her father. After several seasons with the Hampton players, she was signed by Paramount and has been on the screen ever since. In tonight's play... She appears as a lady in the court of King Louis XI. And now the Lux Radio Theater presents The Vagabond King, starring John Bowles as Francois Villon and Evelyn Venable as Lady Catherine. Paris is in the 15th century. Louis XI sits on the throne. 
but his violent subjects plot and grumble in the fur cone tavern, haunt of thieves and murderers. Tonight a fire is burning on the massive hearth, and stretched before it on the floor is Francois Bion, played by John Bowles. He's an unkempt youth with vivid eyes, dark hair, and a tangled beard. Beside Vion sits Huguette, a slim, dark-haired beauty who prods him in the ribs with her foot as she demands an answer to her question. Answer me! Answer me, Francois! Stop kicking me, would you? I want to look at your face. Answer me! I've never seen it upside down before. It's... <laughs> answer me, your pet friend, Tabri, swears you've been out of jail two days, and this is the first I've seen of you, two whole days! Pent and roaming the streets of Paris. Tabri swears you've spent him in scribbling verses to a lady, a great lady, in the palace of the king. Ah, Tabri is a loose-mouthed mongrel. A sharp note for your scent. How landy you a common thief in the frenzy over a lady, King Louis Court. Laughable, that's what it is. Ah, now, just a moment. You're in the frenzy. <laughs> I'm laughing. Answer me. Don't you care a fig about me? Oh, a lot of figs, my pretty one. As I've answered you countless times, but not enough for frenzies. Now, come. What's the news since I went to jail? Oh, I wish you rotted there. Tut, 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 tut. Oh, go away. Be a clown. Move the whole court for all I care. Oh, you get. Why can't we chat comfortably? Hand me my wine. Well, your mug's empty again. That's the last drop you'll get in this tavern without money. Oh, uh, well, there are other taverns in Paris. Oh, come back, Francois. I have no fear, pretty one. I'm not leaving. Then why do you open the door? Oh, there's magic in the air tonight. Feel it? No, I feel a chill. Oh, here's queer magic. What? Two muffled figures at the head of the street. Mm. They're coming this way. Two customers? Oh, perhaps. Come along, you get. Oh. We'll go tell the mistress of the tavern. The prospect of new business may thaw the old elephant. Hmm, and I suppose you'll tell her that you brought them here. Why not, you get? Why not? Look here. The door is open. Well, get on, get on, get on. But, uh, but... But, Lulu, stop butting and come in. An evil-looking place. A sort of cellar. <laughs> what did you expect? A bird's nest? I had no illusions, Your Majesty. Shh, no Majesty here, fool. Plain Dewey. You go shouting that I'm the king of France. What's the good of my being snuffed under this itchy cloak? You're well disguised, sir. Hmm, so this is the trysting place. The fur cone tavern. Ah, an unsavory spot. Be bright, man. Look at my flight. The Duke of Burgundy with a full armed force is just without the Paris gates. My throne sways like a rocking chair. But do I pull a... A sad face. Worse. You run sniffing about taverns after the skirts of a wench. Hmm, wench. Hardly describes my kinswoman, the Lady Catherine de Vercel. Uh, she's coming here tonight. Or oh, so I've heard. As for sniffing about taverns, you forget that I dreamed a dream last night. Dreams and stars and women while Paris goes to the dogs. I dreamed that I was a swine rooting in the streets of Paris. That I found a pearl of great price in the gutter. Uh, I took it and set it in my crown. But it shone so bright it filled all Paris with its light. Then a great star fell from heaven. <laughs> uh, who are those creatures in the other room? The worst cats and rats in all Paris. Bullies, wantons, thieves, murderers. A bad company for a king. Look, look over there. That young bearded fellow standing near the doorway with the tavern mistress. Oh, the fellow with the cocky air. Yes, he's Francois Villon, their Francois leader. Francois Villon. Poet, pickpocket, drinker, and scholar. In their thieves' language, they call him King of the Vagabonds. Oh, okay. Now, leave me be. Oh, come, please, Mistress Taverner. One more mug of wine, please. You've had all you get on thing. Uh, pardon, sir. Will you honor me? Honor you, sir? By drinking at my expense. Uh, mistress, a bottle of your finest wine. Yes, mistress. Uh, Tristan, give me a gold coin. A gold coin? Hey, everybody, come here. Not everybody, monsieur. We'll all honor you, monsieur. And if we ever meet in a dark alley, remind me of this and I'll let you go. Come, all of you. We drink to the downfall of the treacherous Duke of Burgundy. Aye. So, monsieur, you are a patriot. Say, rather, a poet. Town with Burgundy makes good rhyming. Yes, excellent. Uh, what is your ballad? Sons of toil and danger, will you serve a stranger? 
and fall down to Burgundy. Sons of shame and sorrow, will you cheer tomorrow for the crown of Burgundy? Onward, onward, swords against the foe. Forward, forward, the lily banners go. Sons of France, around us break the chain that bound us and to a hell with Burgundy. Sons of toil and danger, will you serve a stranger and fall down to Burgundy? Sons of shame and sorrow, will you cheer tomorrow for the crown of Burgundy? Onward, onward, swords against the foe. Forward, forward, the lily crown of Sons of France, around us bring the chain that bound us and go to hell with Burgundy. Excellent. Tis a pity Burgundy can't hear you all right. Ah, he may. If we ever get a real king. More wine, Margot. Ah, you drink too much for your health, sir. Well, what can honest thieves do but drink? With a bloodthirsty enemy at her door. And a helpless nincompoop upon the throne. Nincompoop? Aye, nincompoop. And no doubt, Francois Villon, you could do better than the king. If you were in his place, then... Francois made a rhyme about that, too. So? Maybe not hear it. Oh, well, uh, if you'll buy another drink, sire. Very well. Begin. The figure on the throne you see is nothing but a puppet. Planned to wear the royal bravery of silk and coat and golden wand. Not so we Frenchmen understand. We bid the damned Burgundian dance. And such a one would take command. If Bion were the king of France... Francois! Friend, friend, Francois! Oh, Tabery, I've been waiting for you, you sniveling Tabery. Another time. The king's archers are around the corner. The king's archers? Aye, a whole nest full of them. In the inside All of you, in there, strangers, hurry. Stop, let me go. Do as your tools, Tristan. Bravo, in you go. Hop in, Tabery. Shh, close the door. Tabery. Are you sure it's the king's archers, or are you just being playful? I'm sure, all right. But what's more, Francois, there's an answer to your pretty verses. What? She's here, the lady of the court. The lady? Will you come inside, your gracious reverend? Is the man I seek here? Uh, there, by the fire. Uh, excuse me, your gracious reverend. <laughs> are you he they call Francois Villon? I. The room is so dark, I can't see my way. Uh, your hand. Thank you. If this be dreaming, God never let me wake again. You wrote me this verse. If I were king, ah, love, if I were king, what tributary natures, nations would I bring to kneel before your steps? And to swear allegiance to your lips, your eyes, your hair, beneath your feet, what treasures would I fling if I were king? Why did you send me this verse? Because you're all my dreams of loveliness. Because I love you, Lady Catherine. I love you. Monsieur. Yes. I, I. Is your heart always so jumpy? Why, what are you staring at? Oh, that frantic rose tossing on your breast. May I have it? What sort of man are you? Briefly, one who steals without shame, sticks a dagger in his enemy, and sleeps with an easy conscience. There you have my virtues, my lady. My vices <laughs> at best remain a puzzle. You risk such things for yourself. What would you do for my asking? What could I do for such as you? Something dearer to me than life itself. What could be dearer than your life? France. My France. Your France. Listen, Francois Villon. I've learned that our Grand Marshal, Thibault Dossigny, would sell our France to the Duke of Burgundy and plot to open the gates of Paris to his army. What can I do? Thibault is coming here any moment to meet one of your men who is in the pay of Burgundy. You declare you love me. With all the meaning love can have. Enough to kill Thibault Dossigny? Kill? You spoke of daggers. But perhaps you didn't expect to be taken at your word. Well, I, I didn't hope to be. You'll stay and point him out. Where can I wait? Up those stairs, on that gallery. You can reach the street from there. There's someone at the door. Your hand, quick, to the balcony. You're safe up here. There's Margot going to open the door. Who's there? Open the door. That's Thibault's voice. Shh. What's going on? 
Long here. You're too thin and raging that it's quiet at this hour. The door was unlatched, monsieur. Then why not show a light? Oil and wicks have their price. Uh, there's a man here by the name of uh, Rene. There he is. Send him to me at once. If he'll come, monsieur. So, sly old Rene is in the pay of Burgundy, hmm? You killed with Thibault. You have my word. There's Rene. You asked for me? I did. Tell me, how is your garden, friend? The grapes are ripe. That's the best word. Monsieur Thibault, this note was carried to me by a Burgundian arrow, shot over the walls at noon. Give it to me. Hmm. The Duke of Burgundy agrees to give me a dukedom and the maid Catherine de Vosselles. That's you. Yeah. Did you know? Not that. Acres of land. <laughs> Oh, King Louis has denied me the maid. Very well, it shall cost him his crown. Yes, sir, I... Quiet. Let me read further. Go now, Lady Catherine. Leave Thibault to me. You will not fail. I'll play the drunken knave, engage him in a fight, and then my sword shall do the rest. For the glory of France. You asked me for this rose, Francois Villon. I give it to you now. My lady. May heaven give you speed. Farewell. What's that? There's someone on that balcony. Hello, hello. Well, wait, my friend. I'm coming down. Who is this drunken fool? It's only Francois Villon. Aye, aye, Francois Villon, yes. Francois Villon. Good evening, monsieur. Uh, will you crack a bottle with me, I? Out of my way, Guzzler. Oh, not so fast. Let's go. Guzzler, did you say? Apologize. Let's go, you drunken dog. Oh, so you will strike me, huh? <laughs> you will strike Francois Villon. What's happened here? Stand back. Friend, why, this rogue has insulted me. Draw your sword, rogue. I'll draw them, kill you, do you swine. Your Majesty, he's evil. He's bad. He's evil. He has run him through. The king's orchids, run, Francois, the orchids are here. Stop! In the king's name. Captain. Give out of here. That devil there, Francois Vion. Take him out and hang him. Stand back. Uh, one moment, Captain. That young gentleman is my affair. Who dares delay the king's justice? I am the king's justice. I am the king. Your majesty, a thousand pardons. The king? You? Yes. Francois Villon? <laughs> Captain Cage, this man. Yes, your majesty. Uh, wait, wait. <laughs> if uh, Villon were the king of France, <laughs> uh, was that just... Good rhyming, Master Poet. Your prison cells don't frighten me. If I'm not a better man than Louis do nothing, Louis dare nothing, may I never drink wine again. Is there one heart in all France that you hold, even as I hold my rabble in this tavern? Is there one enemy of France that you can down, as I just downed that bouncing traitor with his long sword? Take me to your dungeon prison. Hide me away from all the world, and still I'll say, unsullied would our banner stand if we all were the king of France. Our play, The Vagabond King, starring John Bowles and Evelyn Venable, will be resumed shortly. But now, we're at the Union Air Terminal at Burbank, just a few miles from Hollywood. And we're right up where, in just a minute, we should see the big silver-gray New York transport take off. A baggage truck has just pulled up to this giant plane, and bags and suitcases are being stowed away in the luggage compartment. Two women are standing against the passenger's gate to the field, watching their bags being put aboard. Isn't it thrilling? This is my first trip. <laughs> I've lost count of mine, but I still get excited. Oh, you must know all the ropes. Oh, yes, you just ask me anything. <laughs> well, for one thing, what about baggage? I nearly died trying to keep mine down to 35 pounds. Oh, that's a cinch with my system. Tell me about it. Oh, that's easy, darling. Never more than two of a kind, and everything luxable. Yes, a wardrobe of luxables solves the limited wardrobe problem for the smart crowd that travels by air just as it does for the girl who has only a small amount to spend for clothes. Cared for with Lux Flakes, colors and fabrics keep their lovely brand new look for ages. These tissue-thin flakes have no harmful alkali. They do not fade things. And with Lux, there's no rubbing. You can trust to safe, gentle Lux, silks, chiffons, woolens, rayons, and acetates. Anything that's safe in water alone is safe in Lux.
we continue with The Vagabond King, starring John Bowles as Francois Villon and Evelyn Venable as Lady Catherine. It is late the same night, and Francois Villon rages in a prison cell where the king's guards have thrown him for his rashness. But the king is still uncertain and uneasy. With his aide, Tristan, he has come to the court astrologer for a reading. And now they stand in a tower, scanning the starlit sky with anxious eyes. Well, well, astrologer, uh, what have the stars divulged about my dream? The uh, position of the moon and Jupiter we speak your majesty's dream as one of immediate moment. Yes, yes, yes. Your pearl of great price that you found in the gutter indicates that there is a person in the depths who, if he be exalted to the heights, may serve and save your kingdom. Ah, as did the maid of Orleans. Mm, mayhap. What means the star that fell from heaven? There the reading is confused. It may mean that this same creature from the depths, if he be exalted to the heights, will at the end of four and twenty hours fall of his own weight, exalted from the depths, you say. For four and twenty hours. Mm -hmm. And fall of his own weight. Uh, that would be all. Your Majesty. Uh, wait, wait, one thing more. What message is there for me in the heavens concerning my suit for the fair Lady Catherine? Your Majesty, I... Uh, I well, well, well. Uh, there are some things, Your Majesty, that uh, even the stars uh, cannot fathom. Uh, mm. Good night, astrologer. Uh, your Majesty. Uh, Sir, uh, you heard the astrologer. A person exalted from the depths may yet save France. Tristan... I have this hour appointed a new Grand Marshal of France. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. No, 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 not you. Francois Villon. Francois Villon? Don't stop there and peeping. Now, tonight, you'll see to it that a flagon of drugged wine is placed in his prison straw. Let him awake tomorrow morning in the palace. Washed, bearded, sumptuously dressed, so changed his very mother would not know him. <laughs> You and I alone will know of this. But, sire... Thou no buts. Jean d'Arc saved my sire's throne, may not Villon save mine. Then you are going to spare his life? Francois Villon will live? For four and twenty hours. Then he hangs. Uh, look here, Your Majesty. I know it sounds crazy, and uh, you hate to keep telling me, but... But for the last time, who am I? Now, last night, I was Francois Villon. And this morning, you are the Count of Montcorbier, our new Grand Marshal of France. Grand Marshal of France? <laughs> I can't make out whether I'm drunk, mad, or dreaming. Was it a dream that you could be a better king than I? No, sire. That was true enough. Good. <laughs> well, how would you like to be king? <laughs> that solves it. We're both drunk. Uh, not so fast. <laughs> King, say, for uh, four and twenty hours. Until this time tomorrow. And after? Well, and after? By then, you'll be yourself again. The self-same thief and cutthroat. <laughs> you shall build me a great gallows. And your last act as king will be to uh, hang Francois Villon. Uh, uh, come, sir. Uh, you don't actually mean... Are you so keen to live? I never knew I was until yesterday. You'd rather crawl back to your gutter, live out your petty, sordid life, than die to fulfill your dream? Living is sweet habit, sir, whether it be in a palace or the gutter. And who knows what tomorrow holds, but death is its so final. Let me go. Let me free. I'm free to run howling with your tail between your legs. Your Majesty. Uh, what is it? There's a page, Your Majesty, come from Lady Catherine de Vassell. The lady begs audience with the new Grand Marshal. The new Grand Marshal is no more. Take this whimpering thing that boasted so. Strip him of his silks and whip him back to his kennel. Wait. Lady Catherine begs audience of me. Of a man. Not of a cur who dare call himself a king. Go. No, wait. Wait, please. Listen to me. I, uh, may I still choose? For the last time. You said that I might rule for a day if after and after hang. Is that right? Precisely. 
On your word of honor, sire? My word is my honor. Very well, so be it. King for a day. And afterwards, <laughs> the gallows. I was told I might have audience of the new Grand Marshal. I am he. I am Catherine de Vaucelle. I know. As Grand Marshal, monsieur, you hold the lives of prisoners in your hand. I have come to beg a favor of you. Yes? You hold in prison now a certain Francois Villon. Why, yes, I do. I ask that this man's life be spared. What is his crime? He risked his life to kill a traitor who deserved to die. Oh, is this Villon so fired by patriotism? Why, no. He did this because a woman asked it. He thought he loved her. He thought, you say? He wrote her verses. Oh, a rabid poet, I see. But uh, why do you plead for his life? Because I am that woman. You risked disgrace and grave punishment telling me this? He risked his life. You don't, by some strange chance, uh, think that you love him, do you? I? He's of the streets. Oh. A common thief, a nobody. I've blundered. Still, he does not deserve to die. Does anyone? Your wish is granted. Villon is free. Free? As free uh, as I am. I am deeply grateful for your clemency. Oh, wait, please. Don't go at once. I... I, too, would ask a favor, not as a bargain, but if you choose to grant it freely, as a gift. Yes? I quite realize why this fellow risked his life for you, how from his kennel he looked up at you and thrilled, even as a muddy pool might thrill at the moon in heaven. Monsieur. You're startled. I seem to remember you. Remember? Yes. I seem to have known you always. Really, sir? I think your poet, uh, what is his name? Francois Villon must have felt as I do now. How do you know that? How do I know... How do I know I live? I'm somewhat of a poet too, Lady Catherine. And I love a lady, as Villon thinks he loves you. I saw her first on her way to Mass. She saw me no more than the cobblestone she stepped on. She seemed to be listening to words her heart was speaking. Someday you will seek me and find me. Someday of the days that shall be. Surely you will come and remind me of a dream that is for you and for me. Someday, when the winter is over, someday, in the flush of the spring, from me. All the world went with her. But I have found her again. In you. I care little to be flattered. And less to be wooed. What can I do to win you? There is no time to talk of love. I had a hope that a man had come to court. A man who will rid France of Burgundy. A treacherous enemy is at our gate. And no one has dared to strike. And if that man has come? My love is all for France. And to the man who saved her. With you close by me. What miracles might I not achieve? Lady Catherine. Uh, Lady Catherine. Your Majesty. I grieve at shattering this uh, tender interval. It is not I who intrude, but business of state. What business, sire? Uh, the Herald of Burgundy has come for answer under the flag of truce. He awaits our pleasure in the palace. Uh, Tristan. Your Majesty. Uh, see Lady Catherine to be in her chamber. I know the way myself, Your Majesty. 
<laughs> well, well, Francois, a power tastes sweet, does it not? You meet the lady now on an equal footing. I thank your majesty. I please but myself. And, uh, Francois, if uh, the Comte de Montcorbier should win the heart of the Lady Catherine, Villon shall escape the gallows. And the Count shall marry his lady love. You mean that, sire, on your word of honor? My word is my honor. Is Lady Catherine, if she offers me her love, I may go free? That is the bargain. I'll go now to the chamber. At once, sire. Your oh, Majesty, this is madness. Hold your tongue, Tristan. You offer him his life? Only if he should win the Lady Catherine. But why, Your Majesty? Why do you make this mad bargain? My measure of revenge. Mistress Catherine has spurned me too long. <laughs> It'll be sport when the lady finds she has disdained my love to smile upon a beggar. I overheard their meeting, Tristan. She spurs him on to great deeds against Burgundy. <laughs> He'll fight for her as he would never have fought for us. Come. The herald awaits us in the palace. I am anxious to hear Vion's answer. The herald of Burgundy. In the name of the Duke of Burgundy. Greetings to lawyer France. Greetings and be brief. Will it be peace or war? The Lord Grand Marshal will answer that. I, Your Majesty. Uh, you, Grand Marshal. Well... Is it peace of our terms? Uh, one oh. moment, please. Just one moment, please. Uh, Lord Tristan, the court is dull and wants excitement. You are good at planning fates. We give a ball tonight, a masquerade. At a time like this? A masquerade? King Louis, what is this folly? He is king for today. He speaks for France. Thank you, Your Majesty. Now then, Harold, the Duke of Burgundy summons you to surrender. If you refuse, it means disaster... For you, disaster. Disaster spilling of blood, manifold death, and gold to pay. Great words, Herald of Burgundy. In God's name and the king's, go back to your master and say, we are well fed, we are well armed, we lie snug and warm behind our Paris walls. We laugh at your traitorous master. This is our answer, this on a drawn sword. God and Saint Denis for the king of France. Lord and Denis for the King of France. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. You are invited to attend the ball in the palace, which the Lux Radio Theater will present shortly as the third episode of The Vagabond King, starring John Bowles with Evelyn Venable. But before starting out for this brilliant court function, let's take a dancing lesson. On the stage of our theater tonight is Geneva Sawyer, a dance director at 20th Century Fox. A few months ago, Miss Sawyer was only a member of the chorus, but opportunity tapped at her door. Opportunity, in this case, was Bill Robinson, the great Negro tap dancer who chose her for his assistant in teaching new steps to his most famous pupil, Shirley Temple. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Geneva Sawyer. A dance director's hardest job is not teaching new steps, but discovering them. And I think we've succeeded in discovering an entirely new dance for the big new musical show at 20th Century Fox, Pigskin Parade. We've named it the Balboa. And Balboa discovered a new ocean. I suppose you've discovered a new motion. That describes it, and I believe you'll see it dance everywhere this fall. It will be performed for the first time in the picture and by such stars as Jack Haley, Betty Grable, Patsy Kelly, Dixie Dunbar, and that great singing quartet, the Yacht Club Boys. The Yacht Club Boys? Huh? They must have found their high sea legs. <laughs> their dancing is still subject to doubt, Mr. DeMille. They may be called the Yacht Club Boys, but their feet are more like tugboats. But in a couple of weeks, they'll balboa with the best of them. When dancing is regarded as a pleasure and relaxation, it's really very easy to master. The only part of our dancing that's hard work is caring for the costumes. We often change costumes five or six times a day. 
yet they must always be fresh and new-looking for the camera. This means constant freshening. But at 20th Century Fox, we've learned to depend entirely on Lux Flakes for everything washable. Lux not only protects the colors, it prolongs newness and makes our costumes look lovelier. To those young men and women who hope to get dancing jobs in movies, my advice is first to get as good an education as you can. Secondly, don't let any physical impediment keep you from dancing. Just remember that the man who established ballet dancing, Sebastian Simoli, lost both feet as a boy. Jack Donahue, a former riveter, broke both kneecaps but became dance director at Fox. And Bobby Arnst, one of the cleverest dancers on the stage today, learned to dance after an attack of infantile paralysis. If you want to dance, you will. Good night. Good night, Papa. Now we continue with The Vagabond King, starring John Bowles as Francois Villon and Evelyn Venable as Lady Catherine. Francois Villon's one day of glory has come to an end. Night has fallen. The ball is in progress. And the palace and surrounding gardens are bright with festivity. In a dark corner of the garden, Villon is standing, half hidden. When out of the shadows, Tabary, his friend from the Fur Cone Tavern suddenly appears. Francois! Tabary, what news? Are our men ready for the attack on Burgundy? The archers and the army are... Quite... No, not those mercenaries. I mean our men, our people, Tabary, who strike at Burgundy with hatred of traitors in their hearts, with love of Paris in their souls. Every pot house swarms. At ten tonight, they'll wait their orders from the new Grand Marshal, who lifted the tax off their wine, opened the prison doors, and gave them food. Oh, it's a new Paris, Francois. A live, fighting Paris. And all for how little? Not one twentieth part of what is theirs by right. You're doing well, Tabory. Go. Keep amongst them every minute till we ride at ten. If we meet again, well met, friend Tabory. If not, well, we've had our day. Why, you leave the ballet, Lady Catherine? To see what great new wonders you have worked in the hour you've been gone. Well, you truly believe I've worked wonders. I do. <laughs> you've made the king popular, oh. the Parisians loyal, the army faithful. And I think now I've guessed the reason for this fate. That Burgundy might think me a giddy fool. The king's court an orgy, and tonight the hour to catch us unprepared. But our swords are tempered in the wine. At ten we strike. I would I were a man that I might go with you. You would go with me? Why do you say that? I'll tell you tomorrow. Tonight. You ask a maiden to be too unmaidenly. But this night is all we have. Oh, Catherine, I love you dearly, outlandishly, with a love so hopeless that it's done for me. For I can find no reason why you should love me. Do you hear? Not one word. True loving is without rhyme or reason. Now then, would you sing? Would I sing? When we met this morning, you sang. It was oddly stirring. Paris lust for blood. I die of love and you'd have me sing. Well, but it so happens that last night, as I tossed upon some straw, I thought of a rose I once begged of a lady, and I made a song about it. But I'll not sing at all unless you come closer. Oh, so much closer. You are 
are a poet. My lord. Yes, yes, what is it? A message, my lord, from one of the guests. He asked to see you at the north end of the garden at once. At once? Very unfortunate. Did he give his name? No, my lord. Tell him to wait. I'll be there. Catherine. Until later. You'll stay here? I promise not to move a I'll step. I'll not be long. Well, monsieur. Not this year, Francois. You can't. What are you doing here? Shh. Francois, I had to come. In deep disguise. Well, the only way I could get in. How did you know that I was here? The news here? has leaked out that the only new Grand Marshal. Oh, Tabber again. He talks too much. <gasps> Francois, you must leave here at once. Leave? Thibault Dorsen has sworn to kill you. Thibault? Yes, the one you almost fed to Hades last night. You and I are here with enough men to overpower all your guards. They're in disguise. Thibault Dorsen? This time, I'll have to finish him for good. Oh, that's why you can't. You won't even know him. But I can't leave now. But your Hilda. life is in danger. I can't leave now. Oh, there's something holding you here? I see. You... You found your lady. Yes. And does she love you, Francois? I love her. You love her? I once thought you... But you never really cared for me, did you, Francois? I'm sorry, Hugo. No, don't be sorry. Be happy. I want you to be. I'll think of you often. And I'll think of you. I'll remember how gay we were together and the times we had. What songs you sang. How you sang them. Oh, you forget. Forgive me. What's that? Thibault. There's someone hiding in the shadows. It's Thibault. Quick, Francois Vion, life. Too late, Francois Vion. Stand where you are. Ah, Please. Monsieur Thibault, I bid you welcome. Help did your soul Godspeed when I plunge this dagger in your throat. No. Oh, have you reckoned on the king's archers, good Thibault? They're just outside the walls. Cry out but once and you die. Oh. So be it. Archers! Francois, the dagger! In your throat! No, you no. get stand back. No. You've stabbed her. Dean, this is your last time for me. Your Majesty, is standing here. Where is the girl? Again, Chibo. This time, may be on running through for good. That girl upon the ground. Chibo has killed her. Oh, and now he pays the price. Take him. Give him a sword to the hilt. Oh, Lee. Where is the girl? 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 Why did you rush between us? It doesn't matter, Francois. My life is such a little thing. Hold me. I'm going. No, no. Hold me close, Francois. I'm so afraid. I've lived too free. I've sinned. Oh, God forgive me. He knows his children. You were... Always hopeful. Kiss me, Antoine. Kiss me. Just one. You get. You get. Oh, that you should die for me. I should or not, she has. And the hour strikes. It's ten. The hour for battle, sire. For a moment, I. May she be taken with all gentleness to the palace. At once, see to it, Tristan. Yes, sire. And you, sir. For your deeds against the traitor Tebow, ask us any grace. Sire. Except your life. That depends upon your lady. Well? Before I tell you, sire, order Tristan to erect a gallows tree facing your church on the Place de Grève, lest I appear too boastful. Your gallows tree, yet you hope to win. Hmm? Hope dies hard, sire. But Lady Catherine is royally proud. She may not relish the deception. Pardon the cheat, his lie. You mean to tell her? Everything. She shall know me before she makes her choice. If she refuses, be assured you'll swing. And gladly, for what is life, if it be a lie? Gentlemen. Ah, my dear Lady Catherine. Whatever keeps you here this long? Oh, some trifling matters of the life and death. It struck ten, Your Excellency. I know. Time flies. And I now must take my leave, Lady Catherine. But first I have to tell you. First, I too have this to say to you, sir. Outraged decorum, though it may... Wear this token with my prayer. My lady. And with it, I give you my hand. Oh, wait. And my heart. Charming child. Say no more until you know me. Know you? Look at me. Look closely. Do you see nothing to remind you? Yes. Of honor, of manhood, of shining hours among bright roses. No, no. Of last night, a gloomy tavern, a, of a thief who wrote you a long love song. What of him? Simply this. 
I am that thief. You? I am Francois Villon. Oh, it's not true. It can't be true, sire. Not quite true, my royal friend. You are betrothed to a jailbird, <laughs> a full-fledged scavenger. Oh, I see. You've wreaked a royal revenge upon me, sire. And you, sir, why did you do this? I love you. Love? You shame the word. To you, love's but a cunning trick, a boast to mock me with. Well, I know you now. Go back to your dregs, your filthy tavern, and boast. You may well gloat, sir. I'm snared beyond forgetting. Lady Catherine. Now, she's gone. Me thinks you'll hang, Master Villon. As a thief, she first bade me serve her. As a thief, I go to fight for her tonight. Sire, the archers will defend the lower gate. The lower gate? But who fights at the crossroads? I. I and the beggars of the slums. The thieves out of the prisons. We fight at the crossroads. Do you hear that song, sire? My song. This song you hoped Burgundy might hear. Look, sire, the rebel of Paris, armed with axes, knives, drunk craze. The boys of Paris, drunk, inspired. Beware, sire, they fill the garden. Friends, vagabonds. You have not failed me. No more Carbier, but Francois Villon eat you. Right for the mothers that bore you, the women that love you, the children that renew you. Forward, in God's name and the King. None too cheerfully, Your Majesty. No further news of the battle, Christa? None, sire. Uh, uh, that hammer. Uh, where did they come from? Yonder, sire. They are building a gibbet to hang Francois Villon when and if he returns. Mm -hmm. Your Majesty. Ah, fair Catherine, you arrive early. I've been to Mass. To ease your heart? My heart is on the battlefield, sire. With France, yes, yes, I know. And I bless you for it. But France is a broad target for a little ah, It's time you narrow it down to, to say, a Frenchman. I have. Have you now? Just since last night. I've realized so many things since then, sire. So much happened so quickly last night that unreasoning pride confused the truth. The truth? I fear it will startle you. And that's pointless now. As I doubt I shall ever see him again. Oh, Vion. No, no, probably you won't. And uh, that would be kinder to all concerned uh, than to see him dangling on that gallows. That gallows? is for Francois Villon, if he survives the night. Sire, do you say this to torture me? Oh, does it torture you? Hmm. Is this the reward for bravery? For courage? The reward he gambled for. Your hand in marriage or the gallows? My hand in marriage? That could never have been... My rank forbids it. I counted on that, milady. Your Majesty. Well, Captain. Sire, your Grand Marshal returns in triumph. Your archers and his fighting rabble at his heels. Victory. I summon the Queen and all the court. A madman has saved my throne as the Maid of Orleans saved it from my sire. He come and see how they pour into the square after him. They've gone wild. It's chaos. <laughs> You have returned. Put banners for your coffin. An hour ago, they flung over Burgundian helmet. In the king's name, a golden coin to every man and woman who fought. And wine, wine to every man, woman, and child who wishes to drink the king's health. <laughs> Ever generous, Dion. To the end, sire. Pray speed the end. As you wish, sire. Hear you, all my last duty. Some among you know me as Count Montcarbier. Some as Francois Villon. I fought and lost the hazard. And it is now my task as your Grand Marshal to declare the life of Francois Villon forfeit. And to pronounce upon him this sentence. That he be straightway hanged on yonder gibbet. Oh, 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 sire, 
this vile injustice. Listen to your people. He led France to victory. You are France. Will you let him die like this? My good people, you've heard Master Vion and the lady here. If there be one among you ready to take this hero's face on yonder gallows, let him speak and come forward. What? <laughs> no one? No man shall die for me. We're wasting time. Take me to the gallows. Wait. Sire, I claim your promise. You choose to die in this man's place? I offer the hand that spares his life. That's folly. Madness. No. I love you. Quiet. Why, last night you loathed him. I was blinded. You mean this? I do, Francois Villon. Your rank forbids you. I renounce my rank. Before you all. I'm Catherine de Vaucel, Grand Seneschal of Gasconia. In my domain, I hold the power of life and death, which I now renounce with all my rank, that I may claim to marry this gentleman. A miracle has happened. A star has fallen to me out of heaven. Ah, a star. My dream. My dream, Tristan. The stars have spoken. Keep your lands and titles, Catherine, and God speed you with this freak to a priest. Sire. Do you love me, Francois Villon? With all my being, I worship you. I prayed for a man with the soul of a king. My prayers have been answered. Louis of France, we ask your blessing. Uh, you have it, but uh, no more playing king for you, little man. <laughs> Never, sire. It would be a great nuisance, sir. With a star to cherish. <laughs> Plays like journeys end in lovers' meetings, but John Bowles and Evelyn Venable return in a moment. The man you will hear next is one of the most successful scenario writers in Hollywood, winner of the Motion Picture Academy Award for that classic of the bus lines, It Happened One Night. His many hits include The Whole Town's Talking, Broadway Bill, and the current box office windfall, Mr. Deeds Goes to Town. A former playwright and producer, he has written every picture directed by Frank Capra during the last five years. And in a few weeks, you'll see his adaptation of James Hilton's best-selling novel, Lost Horizon, starring Ronald Coleman. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Riskin. Thank you. I'm a little nervous. What do I do now? Just talk into that microphone. It won't talk back at me, will it? No, no. That's the beauty of microphones. You can whisper in its ear or bark your head off. It holds its tongue. Haven't you ever spoken on a radio before? Yes, just once, about ten years ago. I spoke in the interest of a play of mine. Nobody ever came to see it after that. <laughs> if the Lux sales fall off next week, you'll know the reason why. Lux sales never fall off. I'll have you know. Yes, that. I know. It's the finest product in the market. What do I say now? Huh? Talk about yourself. Why? That's the reason you're here. I thought I was selling Lux. Here you are. But you've been a very successful writer in Hollywood, and we'd like to know the secret. Say, look, I know a good knock-knock. Oh, come, not you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Knock-knock. All right. Who's there? DeMille. DeMille who? The mills of the guards grind slow. <laughs> but they, they do grind exceeding small. I know another one. Never mind, never mind. We're trying to find out the secret of your success. I saw Mr. Deeds go to ta goes to town. It's a grand picture. How did you ever think of the word pixelated? I thought of the people who pay my salary every week. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? I see you're catching the spirit of the thing. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very quick. Well, who's there? Lux. Lux who? Lux, like this interview ought to come to an end, don't you think? <laughs> Not until you answer the question. What's the formula for success in Hollywood for a writer? Oh, that's a cinch. Now, you're going to be serious, aren't you? Oh, yes. All right. How can a writer succeed? By finding himself a magnificent director like Frank Capra. Agreed. Or one like you. Thanks for including me. I'm no idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed you're not. You've worked with Frank Capra a long time. Nearly five years. Any trouble? Trouble. It's the longest vacation I ever had in my life, with pay. <laughs> I'll venture to say working on the Lost Horizon was no vacation. I'm sorry you mentioned that. You're forcing me to be serious. It's the one job I'm really excited about. Did you read the James Hilton book? Yes. Beautiful, wasn't it? Truly great. 
Did you write the story for Grace Moore's next picture? You can ask more questions. And you give so little information. Did you write it or didn't you? Yes, I did. I think the audience would be interested in hearing what technique you follow in writing a picture. Knock, knock. What is your method of approach? Knock, knock. Would you rather adapt the story or write an original? Knock, knock. All right, who's there? Yvonne. Yvonne who? Yvonne to go home. Good night. <laughs> Good night. And now, Evelyn Venable and John Bowles. It seems odd not to be at home tonight listening to the Lux Radio Theater. Why, in our house, John, Mr. DeMille has 48 regular fans. Really? Well, that's more than I had when I played baseball at school. <laughs> yes. There's myself, my husband, and our baby. Then there's Tessie, the English bull terrier, mm -hmm. Jim, the turtle, three tomcats, <laughs> and 40 goldfish. The animals came in two by two, the elephant and the kangaroo. What are you waiting for, Evelyn? Another flood? <laughs> not quite. <laughs> what I'm waiting for is to learn how John likes to, be, likes to be directed by a woman. His next picture, Craig's Wife, is being filmed by the only woman director in Hollywood. Yes, Dorothy Osner. Very good director, too. Well, speak for yourself, John. <laughs> well, I have been bossed by women all my life. <laughs> but seriously, it's really a pleasure working with Miss Osner. Uh, Ross and Russell, though, plays the part of my wife, and Russell has to boss me, nag me, and, oh, well, almost to death. Sometimes I wish I'd been a ball player after all. I think, you've, I think you've done better in pictures. I saw you play last summer when the leading men played the comedians. John pitched for the leading men. After the game, the comedians voted him their most valuable player. <laughs> <laughs> well, you see, Mr. DeMille, uh, I was just a little off form that day. <laughs> Why, I might have even been a member of the Cleveland Indians today. I've beaten you there, John. As Mr. DeMille said, I'm already a member of the Indians, the Iroquois. And he said your name in English is Laughing Eyes. What is it in Indian? Oh, that's something I don't know, John. Laughing Eyes. Well, it's probably a great deal like Minnie Ha Ha. And now, Mr. DeMille, my thanks to you for so many delightful Monday nights, both past and future. Good night, Evelyn. And by the way, C.B., uh, when you're picking actors for your picture, The Plainsman, don't take any wooden end-ends. Good night. <laughs> Good night, picture. Bowles and Miss Venable. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your announcer, Melville Ruick. Supporting our stars tonight were Walter Kingsford, Wyndham Standing, Brett Morrison, Lou Merrill, Cecil Elliott, Margaret McKay, Ross Forrester, Russ Dudley, and Frank Nelson. Mr. Bowles and Mr. Riskin appeared through courtesy of Columbia Studios. Mr. DeMille, Paramount, and Miss Venable, Miss Sawyer, and Mr. Silvers, 20th Century Fox. Mr. Silvers prepared the musical score for their new hit, Sing Baby Sing. And Miss Sawyer is a featured dancer in this picture, which stars Alice Bay and Adolph Manjou. Miss Venable will be seen shortly in Star for a Night. Mr. DeMille tells us now of next week's program. Next Monday night, we all have an appointment with a dentist. But it's one dental appointment we can look forward to with pleasure. Because in this case, the gentleman with the drill will be Jack Oakey. Performing for us in the Lux Radio Theater as the small-town toothache expert in the stage and screen picture success one Sunday afternoon. Co-starring with Jack will be Miss Helen Twelve Trees. <laughs> Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be our guest next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents One Sunday Afternoon, starring Jack Oakey and Helen Twelve Trees. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.